Hi guys, welcome to the seminar. No? Let me just give a one last uh, shout out to the group and then we begin. Yeah, but the recording is starting. So. All right, guys. So, uh, everybody, again, uh, good morning and welcome to our basic pool maintenance seminar. And uh, this has been a long time coming, and uh, I'm so excited to share with you uh, our knowledge, uh, my knowledge actually, <laughs> specifically uh, regarding the pool. No, so just um, okay. Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, this is me, AJ Kumar, and I am the CEO of Innovative Water Solutions Inc. So usually, uh, I mean, most of the times we are into drinking water uh, filtration systems. Actually, that's how we began um, with drinking water. So we have clients like Manila Water, uh, Metro Cebu, uh, water district, Rojas water district, the Gigara water district. So usually we work on the water district side, but then uh, we had some friends who wanted to, uh, who wanted help with their pools. And uh, so when we came into the pool market, we saw that, okay, there's a very big problem. People don't know anything or people don't know much about uh, when to use a certain type of filter. What is the what should be the pump, what should be the flow rate. Everyone is uh, just, I don't know how they even size it. Uh, and then eventually I found out, okay, so these are prepackaged, like companies like Hayward and other companies, they come up with the prepackaged stuff. So they have catalogs and that's where all the details are. So uh, pool builders just follow that. And now because of COVID, uh, ever since the onset of COVID, uh, People have been building pools and I have seen before I could count pool builders uh, on my fingertips. Now there, everybody is becoming a pool builder. So, and then they, everyone gives 10 year warranty on the pool when in fact, they're not even 10 years old. So, you know, long story short, uh, people know how to build pools. Uh, they might not, they know how to build the structure, the shell of the pool. They can even waterproof it. They can even design it. Like they can put the best of the tiles, uh, but then it's not rooted in science. No, they, uh, there's no clue about hydraulics, how the water hydraulic should work, what to avoid, what dead zones, all of that stuff. So here we'll have a very short overview on these things. Uh, so the agenda today is, of course, discussing who we are and what are the common pool equipment in the Philippines. Then you'll learn the basics of pool chemistry. Uh, what are the basic chemicals that you must use? What are the main problems with the pool and how to solve them? And then we go straight into Q&A, okay? Uh, I won't waste much time here. And uh, I'll go only over the basics because again, it's a topic within its own. Like if I discuss about common pool equipment in the Philippines, I could discuss it for an hour. Same, same thing with pool chemistry, same thing with chemicals, like how many chlorines are there, right? How many brands are there? So if we go into details for everything, maybe we might not be able to finish in an hour. So uh, just we'll try to finish as much as we can, okay? So uh, again, we are, and uh, so basic pool equipment. So there are cartridge filters, uh, DE filters and sand filters. So, uh, obviously, cartridge filters. Uh, uh, this there are some people who are using that kind of drawings. Uh, sorry, that those kind of cartridge. But uh, there are other um, there are other cartridge filters which I'm sure you guys already know by now. And if you don't, we'll we'll discuss. We'll show you the images later. Okay. Uh, then we have the DE filters. Uh, I uh, these are very very popular in the Philippines. Um, I've seen most of the pools use these filters. 
Uh, guys, by the way, uh, if you have any questions, uh, just chat them na lang so you don't forget or you can write them down somewhere uh, so that we can all we can discuss that through only in the Q&A section so that the, the flow of the meeting or the flow of the seminar doesn't get stopped. Well, okay. So DE filters, very, very popular in the Philippines and then the sand filters or the pressure filters, right? So, okay. Uh, about cartridge filters, these are actually the, the least expensive filters in the market but the only thing is it's 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 really a hassle so you have to remove it uh, you have to clean it every now and then and then you have to put it back again so i have seen these are very good for small pools okay they were originally built for say jacuzzis um, and very very small pools let's say around 10000 liters kaparanganon uh, now the problem is people use it even for 50000 liters of pool so that's not that's where the cartridge filter will definitely fail. Uh, I know it's cheaper, but it's not even meant to trap all these particles that you're trying to trying to uh, 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 trap into the filters. So they will clog very easily. They'll get dirty very easily, and then you have to clean them more often than not. Uh, second is DE filter. The E filter is again uh, a mechanical filter where you need DE powder, right? So the whole point with DE powder is diamaceous earth. I think that's how you call it. So you put this in the filter. It kind of forms like a film around the uh, around the around the main mechanical filter. And uh, uh, now when the water passes through, it can capture like very very small uh, particles down to one micrometers in some uh, DE filters. And uh, they they give very very they give very good water quality. Uh, the water is very clean. The water is very pristine. Uh, very good for good uh, big pools, right? So fifty thousand liter pools, uh, even around one hundred thousand liter pools. But they become a nuisance when you are now in a commercial water park, right? So if you go bigger, uh, larger volumes, you can just imagine how many DE filters you would need, and then. Every time you need to remove them, you need to clean them. So I talked to this pool, uh, uh, pool park, uh, water park, sorry. And they had like, I think 20 of these DE filters. And the, the, con the pool maintenance technicians were like, sir, can you just help us like convince mom that can we shift to another kind of filter? Because this takes like at least two hours just to clean. So you can just imagine, right? And there are many, like there are a lot of people uh, working in that part. So, okay, uh, moving on, sand filter. So sand filter is uh, where uh, it's like a tank with sand in it. So you can actually put a lot of, fil uh, lot of filter media. You can put uh, sand filter media, or you can put, we have zeolite. Uh, you can also put glass filter media. Uh, and every filter media has a different characteristic. So. I think that's where most of the companies get wrong, uh, like Hayward or other companies. When they are making a catalog, they make a catalog for sand, okay? So now if you're using another filter media, let's say like carbon or a zeolite or glass filter media, uh, you cannot have the same quantity. And uh, I think that's where most of the pool builders cannot help. And uh, it's, it's always wise to go to uh, groups like these, or you could also go to uh, other places such as uh, American, usually American water, uh, European are the best. So they know all the flow rates, they know all the, uh, the water flow, so it's better. But since you're here, you can always ask questions regarding this, okay? We'll also make a table eventually using different filter media. So sand filters are the easiest to maintain. Uh, as you can see on the top, they have like a filter valve. All you have to do is just rotate them uh, and it will backwash. Backwash is the way it cleans itself. And uh, But the problem is if you don't design a sand filter properly, uh, it cannot catch uh, small particles again. So uh, And then sand also becomes a biofilter. Um, what that means is bacteria. It harbors bacteria growth. Uh, and it will not, uh, when there is bacterial growth, the sand will start to parang coagulate or clump together. So instead of water filtering through the sand, it will just pass through. So people will think like, oh, it's filtering, but no, sorry. If your pool looks the same, 
even after you filtered it with the sand filter, let's say for 12 hours, I'm sorry, there is a problem with the sand filter. Let's say it's not even filtering, right? So you have to either backwash or you have to clean it properly, let's say for a lot of time. And then again, you have to start filtering it, okay? Sorry, I, I don't know how much time did I take on that one slide? Almost, almost nine minutes, that's a lot. Uh, okay, so pumps. Now we have two kinds of pumps. We have single speed pump and variable speed pump. Uh, single speed pump is what you guys, uh, what normally guys use. Um, there's just one speed pump. And variable speed pump is uh, a new kind of pump, actually not very new in the Western world, but very new in the Philippines, that uh, it has three kinds of speeds. So this is good when you are, for filtering, let's say you are not using your pool, right? You don't want the pump to work 100%. So you can have a slower flow rate uh, or a slower flow so that your filter can filter properly. So uh, it's inverse, uh, it's, it, there's, there's a balance, right? So if you are having a very fast flow through the filter, the filter will not filter. Let's, it's like you're trying to push, imagine coffee filter, right? Imagine putting all of the, the, the coffee mug you have, or sorry, what do you call that? The jug into the coffee paper and you expect, like you are, you're not even controlling. Usually what do you see? People pour it very slowly. So the slower the filter, the better the filtration quality. And uh, so in Europe, people don't compromise with this. But in Philippines, of course, budget is everything, right? So people compromise on this one. They can, they, they say, okay, we don't want the pristine quality, but then we also don't want the bad quality. So we'll stick to somewhere in the middle. And then they rely on the, on the pool builders to make the right choice for them, which is very normal. Okay, so variable speed pump has three kinds of fill, uh, three kinds of speeds. Uh, one is slow, one is medium, one is fast. Fast is what you use for backwashing or for cleaning. Let's say when you're vacuuming. Uh, medium is when, you, when you're swimming. So when you guys are actually using the pool. And then the last one is when no one's using the pool and you still want the water to circulate, right? So the whole point is, uh, the cleanliness of your pool will depend on the balance of filter and pump. So take note of this one. If your filter and your pump are not correctly sized, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, even if you run eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours or even 24 hours, your pool will not become clear and you will be reliant on chemicals like kami. Our business is chemicals. We really tried initially to teach people all of these things, but people want, you know, they want quick solutions. Oh, sir, can you help us right now, right now, right now? And then uh, we have to come up with chemicals just to sort these problems out. But if you want to save a lot of money in the long run, invest in mechanical filtration, invest in a good filter, invest in a good pump, and I think you will save like around 80% or even 90% on chemicals, right? Uh, this is a topic on its own altogether, but of course you can ask questions always in the group. Uh, and I would be happy to help you all of out. And right now we are also having a partnership with multiple companies, pool companies, because we don't our, ourselves, we don't sell the filters and pumps. But since we'll be having partnership with them, we'll be able to get you at a very discounted rate, right? So, or all of the members there. All right, so importance of having your ass, sorry, I did not check this one. So filter area, sorry, this is filter area, not filter A-R-E-A. So flow rate and filter area, right? How big is the filter and how fast is the flow through the filter? Uh, that's what I discussed just a while ago. So importance of water circulation. Now, uh, the whole point is uh, sometimes you will say, hey, sir, I use the man chemicals bucket. Why is my water still not clear? And what's going on? So, so we have things called dead zones in the pool. And dead zones are very, uh, you can tell. So when you jump into the pool and you have two different kind of temperatures, let's say you have a uh, different temperature at the bottom and you have, you have a hotter temperature on the top, you have a colder temperature at the bottom, or you have colder temperature in certain parts of your pool, Deba, I'm sure you've noticed that. Uh, that's called dead zone. That's where the water is stagnant. 
the water is not really moving properly. So those areas are where you will have bacteria growth or you will have algae stagnation and they can easily go throughout the pool, right? That's That becomes like a manufacturing plant, that zone. In some pools, there are many, there are multiple dead zones. In other pools, sometimes the whole part is a dead zone, like the far end of the pool, say, say um, have you noticed if you get if you don't see a lot of inlet and outlet ports uh, inside the pool, so let's say you don't have the proper main drains or you don't have the uh, proper return to pool channels, uh, the proper number box. So what happens is uh, the filth, the water will go through certain areas and the other areas it will completely ignore. <laughs> so you end up putting a lot of uh, chemicals and you're wondering like what the what's going on, right? Uh, so. We have again, it's another topic altogether, but the the whole point is circulate your pool, circulate the water in your pool. It's very, very important. Uh, run your pumps every every day. Uh, some people ask me, how many hours should I run? Eight hours, 10 hours, six hours, four hours. So again, it's another topic, let's say uh, 10,000 liters, right? And your pump fill, your pump can push around uh, four or five cubic meters or 5,000 liters per hour. So that means you only need to run your filter two hours, right? Because that would be the proper pool turnover. Uh, pool, pool turnover is basically how much, the all the water in the pool, how long it takes to uh, pass through the filter and back into the pool. So in some pools, it's 24 hours. I've seen worse. I've seen three days. I've seen two days like, they will use very small pump and filter, and then they have a very big pool, right? And then in other in other pools, I've seen, because uh, say the owner wants 1.5 horsepower, kahit small yung pool niya, he wants 1.5, and then yung filter is not properly matching. Let's say he has a 1.5 horsepower pump and a very small cartridge filter. What do you think the result will be, diba? Uh, you cannot expect it to be like the same as a, a properly filtered pool or a properly sized pool filters okay uh, let's discuss about uh, the the equipment so the equipment is first is pool vacuum uh, i mean this is the this is on the other side the maintenance side right so pool vacuum you have manual vacuuming where you do it manually and then you have a robotic cleaner uh, which is good for say infinity type pools or people or, or pool owners who don't want to uh, do the vacuuming on their own uh, of course robotic cleaner is not 100% uh, controllable like uh, manual is but then it's it does all the it does the main majority of the pool and it goes very slowly on its own so the whole point of vacuuming is to get the debris from the bottom of the pool because most of the times the filter can filter the 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 middle range and the upper range so uh, the upper part of the pool and the middle range part of the pool, kaya nasa in, uh, filter. But when it comes to the lower water, not all the times the pool filter is successful. So that's where the vacuum has to come in. That's where you vacuum wor works right at the bottom, right? And uh, you have to be as slow as possible, especially if your pool is cloudy. You have to be super, super slow. Uh, and uh, again, you can see, right? You can see the connection. If your filters are not fine or your filters are not uh, properly sized, the, the problem actually cascades. So you will have to have a higher maintenance if the pool filters and pumps are not sized properly. Okay, so uh, that's very short on this one. Uh, I won't teach you how to vacuum the pool because there are multiple videos, but if you want to learn, just uh, leave, just let's do it in the Q and A, okay? Okay, other accessories are leaf skimmers. Of course, uh, if you are surrounded by a lot of trees, make sure that you're able to get the leaves on time, right? They fall into the pool. The leaves will, will release, let's say, uh, color. They will also release nutrients like phosphates and nitrates into the pool. Uh, you'll have to be very careful uh, not to keep the leaves in the pool for a very long time. And then the algae brush. Make sure you brush the pool, but if you use our, if you use the chemicals, we'll suggest you you don't really need algae brush because there are algae that will not come off even using an algae brush, right? Okay, so 
and our job is to prevent algae in the first place. So basic water chemistry, we're, we're actually going very fast. That's good, uh, more, more time for question answers. Uh, basic water chemistry is uh, you need to have chlorine, pH, alkalinity, and total hardness. Uh, you need to keep an eye on four of these things. Mostly in Philippines, you can notice that people people keep an eye on chlorine and pH lang. Uh, so their test kit is only meant to see the two targets, right? But alkalinity, people don't watch it. Total alkalinity, actually. And then the total hardness. So some pools, the hardness will go. So I also put target values on the side. Chlorine, actually, we really want it to be as low as possible, even below 1 ppm, okay? Now, there are three types of chlorine. I think I've discussed this in the blog post before. Uh, free chlorine, um, combined chlorine, and total chlorine. What the target value says here is free chlorine, okay? Free chlorine should be 3 ppm. This is the American standard. In Europe, the free chlorine is only 0 0.3. <laughs> 0 0.3 lang. Kunti lang yung chlorine. And uh, that's because they, they focus on the mechanical side of the filter. If you, if you have very little particles left in the pool because of proper filtration, you don't really need a lot of chlorine, right? And uh, the pH, of course, is the balance of alkalinity and acidity in your pool. Uh, and your the normal pH of water is 7, right? And uh, human beings... You have to you have to balance the pH based on the tears of the human eye, like our human tears. But when we cry, so uh, that is seven point five pH. That's why people stick to seven point five so that you won't feel the you won't feel the uh, the effects of alkalinity or acid. And of course, if you have very low acidity in your pool, um, sorry, low pH. Uh, the start the the tiles will start to come off right so it's because it's acidic it will be a bit uh, it will be corrosive as well and if you are alkaline uh alkaline is like if you have higher alkalinity you you know bleach is high high, high alkalinity and it stinks right so uh you don't want high alkalinity as well sorry high 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 alkalinity yeah in the uh, you you don't want the water to be high alkaline sorry high ph okay and uh so some pools, uh, pool owners come to us and say, sir, uh, our our pH keeps going up like super fast. Like one day, it'll go back up again. Eight na, uh, eight na agad. So that's where the alkalinity comes in. Now, alkalinity and pH are parang brothers and sisters, right? So if you, if you, put, if you put acid, the acid will not only lower the pH, but it will also lower the alkalinity. So sometimes when you have very low alkalinity, the pH will not be stable, okay? So uh, it's good to have an alkalinity test kit as well. Let's say there are pool test strips that can measure alkalinity. And uh, how to balance alkalinity, you just, uh, let's do that later, okay? Uh, again, it's already 8.24, so. Um, but the target value is 90. If you make it more than 90, the pH will always be on the high side and you will constantly wonder, oh, I put muriatic acid yesterday, bucket, the pH has gone up again or why my pool is cloudy in a month? Uh, because you have to keep an eye on alkalinity, okay? That may be the issue. And then the total hardness. Sometimes the pool owners don't change the water for a very long time and uh, slowly, because you are putting, you're constantly putting calcium, uh, calcium carbonate, right? So calcium, um, Calcium hypochlorite, which is granular or powder chlorine, when you use a lot of powder chlorine every time, the total hardness will go up. Okay, so if the total hardness goes up, it goes beyond 350 ppm. The only thing you can do is partially drain the water because uh, that's actually the cheapest way. Okay, and you don't want the hardness to be lower as well. So if the hardness is lower, you can't really filter properly. So your filters are practically useless if low on hardness. Pero kung the hardness is very high, then your pool will be subject to like yung scaling, di ba? The white lines uh, around the pool or there will be uh, 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 scaling in the pipe, in the filters. You will see all the white things and stuff like that. So you don't want very high hardness, but you also don't want very low hardness. So 250 to 350 
350 for cement pools, right? And then 250 usually for the vinyl pools. Okay, so now the basic chemicals. First is chlorine. We have liquid and granular chlorine. So liquid is also called sodium hypochlorite. It usually is around 8%, 8 to 12%. And then we have the granular chlorine. And granular chlorine, you can have like, uh, you know, your more brands, you already know them on like Fujiclone, Iclone, Hyclone. Uh, these are the granular chlorine. You have like 50%, you have 70%, and you also have 90%. Now, I have made multiple posts in the past about different kinds of chlorine. Uh, what the one we stick to, Kaminaman, uh, because we come from the water treatment industry. So 70% is what we use. We cannot use 90% because 90% is basically 70% chlorine plus cyanuric acid. Uh, so we don't really need cyanuric acid. Sometimes you guys might be wondering, bucket we when we use pool naman, uh, sorry, when we use 90% chlorine, sir. Uh, our pH also goes down. That's because with 90% chlorine, there's also cyanuric acid. Now, cyanuric acid is put into the chlorine to make sure that the chlorine will last longer. So that's it, right? Uh, in, in Philippines, naman, it's very hot. So sunlight is the enemy, number one enemy of chlorine. It's not even the human waste. It's actually sunlight. If there is, if there is, if it's a hot day, expect your chlorine to disappear within a few hours. And it depends on the on the quantity of uh, chlorine in the pool. So that's why 90% chlorine works really, really well, because it lasts longer because it's protected with cyanuric acid. Okay. Uh, and chlorine is used for disinfection of the pool. Uh, guys, only use chlorine for disinfection. Uh, it's not I was very shocked when before I used to hear like uh, pool gets clear because of chlorine. Like, wow, I did not know that. Uh, <laughs> and then because how the pool becomes or how the water becomes clear is through a filter, right? Uh, I did not know that if you can if you can put so much chlorine into the water, the water actually will uh, the chlorine will oxidize all the bacteria and the small particles. But now you have a lot of chlorine. So then you wait for the sunlight to come so that it can take away the chlorine. So I was very, very shocked when I first entered the pool market. But my, my again, my recommendations will always be use chlorine for disinfection or for killing off algae, right? So and you don't want the algae to grow. You also, you can kill it with chlorine. Okay, oh, we have another. Uh, so, uh, okay, now we have uh, acid, right? Sorry about the pictures. It's actually muriatic acid or dry acid. So muriatic acid is the liquid. Uh, dry acid is, of course, the granular, the powder acid. So people now be uh, usually ask me, sir, when to use muriatic, right? Or, oh, we use muriatic. How come our pool is not clear? Well, it doesn't work that way because muriatic, uh, pe uh, people use muriatic in their bathrooms, right? To clean the toilet stains and stuff, stuff like that. And they believe that uh, it it disinfects the pool. I'm sorry, muriatic acid does not disinfect anything. Muriatic acid just lowers the pH, which uh, makes it easier for things to be removed. Uh, but then it it in it in itself doesn't remove uh, anything in the pool, right? So dry acid and muriatic is meant to lower the pH and the alkalinity in the pool. That's it. Uh, don't use it for disinfection because that's the chlorine's job. Now, if you have high pH, your chlorine will not perform effectively. So let's say anything beyond 7.5, the chlorine will have a, a young, young efficiency of chlorine goes down. I, I, I'm not sure by what factor, but it's very considerable. So the lower the pH, let's say uh, uh, from 6 to 7.2 or 7.5, the, the chlorine works very efficiently. But when you go higher, let's say when the pH is already 8, you, will, you probably might need double dosage of chlorine already. So again, whenever maintaining the pool, first check for the pH. And you can easily control pH or lower pH with muriatic or dry acid. 
All right, so we have special chemicals. Uh, guys, these are the chemicals that we are uh, obviously having in the in the company. And that's only because of certain problems that we have noticed in the market, right? So uh, I'll go very quickly since we only have like now, it's 9.30 already. Uh, so spark pool conditioner, again, it's, uh, uh, it's, to, it's to make the water uh, easier to maintain. So when we find clients with very stubborn pools, say, uh, lagi naman taas yung pH, lagi naman uh, may algae sa pool. So we we tell them, hey guys, use spark pool conditioner because uh, you are not hand, you're not day to day uh, pool maintenance people. Uh, so use something that can help you, and it's once a year dosage, so it makes things a lot easier. I'll go quickly. Yeah, ignite is again an algae preventer. Again, uh, we do not want the algae to grow in the first place so we do whatever it takes to avoid the growth uh, and then we also prevent it so we use uh, ignite to control the, the the nutrients in the pool so phosphate nitrates uh, all of these can be controlled using ignite so we have a phosphate test kit and this is really like for really stubborn pools okay uh, okay so clear up pool clarifier it's again it's a combination of six uh, coagulants and flocculants. Um, it's, it's just special kind of chemicals we use in water treatment. So this technology comes from water treatment is when the water is very malabo or very turbid, uh, we use this, uh, clear up, and uh, we pour it around the pool. Mas maganda dapat if you have like a dosing pump and you can dose it within the pipe. Uh, that way you can really make sure that all the water is uh, all, all the water is clarified, right? But but then again, uh, you know, people don't really want to have the hassle of that one. So we end up telling them, okay, just use pool clarifier, but use the pump na lang to mix the pool clarifier within the pool. And uh, uh, pool clarifier or any chemical in that case might not work if the, if the circulation of the pool in itself is not working properly, right? So you can you can supplement it with using a brush, like you're literally trying to move the water. Not possible for a big, a very big pool, but re it's obviously possible for a smaller pool, right? Just put the chemicals in, and you can start manually like mixing. <laughs> it's just like mixing coffee with glass in a in a in a glass of you know water. Imagine imagine guys, if you're not using a spoon or a fork. Uh, even then, the coffee don't mix properly. So you're expecting chemicals to mix into the in a in a very big pool with no like mixing spoon or something, right? So yeah, you have to help your pool as well. Uh, sorry, the des your initial designs might have been wrong, so that makes the maintenance a bit difficult. So you can use something like vacuum, but uh, you can suck the water from the bottom, and then you can just uh, have the Instead of draining all the water, you can just send it back into the pool, right? This is only for circulation purposes, okay? So algae bombs are our chlorine dioxide tablets. They are 10 times more effective than chlorine, but they are very short lasting. So that's why you cannot use it to replace chlorine. Uh, you only use it for like uh, ultra disinfection, right? So if someone has uh, like my diarrhea or someone vomited into the pool or someone uh, or there's high algae or there's uh, the pool is very cloudy because marami bacteria or uh, there are many small particles in the water um, you have to use algae bombs okay okay so active summer now this is a chlorine protector uh, this is a technology we got from wastewater systems uh, in wastewater systems we we try to make uh, hydroxyls which are the most powerful uh, disinfectant in the entire world um, what active summer does is when we pour this into the pool it takes the sunlight uh, of it, it takes the sunlight and instead of uh, sunlight evaporating the chlorine like I mentioned earlier active summer will convert it into hydroxyl so it will convert it into very powerful uh, free radicals or uh, into disinfectants that are microsecond lasting. They don't even last for a one second. They are very short lasting, uh, but their effect is, it's just, I, I, I might be exaggerating, right? But it's super, super powerful. It can even oxidize pharmaceutical waste, chemical waste, cosmetic waste. So let's 
think sun lotions think uh, uh you know human pee with a lot of other nasties and think of gel hair gel think of uh, uh creams and lotions right so yeah and then it also protects chlorine it makes the chlorine last longer and then we have ph and chlorine testers or or strips so um, again we there are like seven in one there are two in one go with something that is on the higher side right so six in one paranganon seven in one they have usually the alkalinity test they have cyanuric test they have chlorine they have free chlorine they have total chlorine they have a ph they have uh, hardness so they have basically everything now uh, okay so the main problems with the pools are algae, cloudy, chlorine odor, and brown pools. So um, people, I, um, I think we're already almost out of time. We have nine minutes left now. Um, okay, so main problems with pools is algae pool, cloudy, chlorine odor, and brown pools. So brown pools is when you have a lot of iron in the pool. Uh, chlorine odor is when your pool is actually lacking disinfection. It's a, it's a byproduct, right? When you put a lot of chlorine into the pool, uh, it will disinfect the required lung. But then if you put too much chlorine into the pool, it will combine with other things, right? It will combine with your uh, the human pee or something, and then it will create ammonia, and then the ammonia will react with the free chlorine. So yeah, it's a bit nasty. That's why you will have the corrosion around the pool. You will have this, the solid chlorine odor, and people think, oh, there's too much chlorine in the pool today. I'm sorry, that's not the smell of chlorine, that's the smell of chloramines. Uh, another topic, all right? Cloudy pools is uh, basically, if your pH is high, again, like I said uh, earlier, if your total hardness is high, if your pH is high, if your total alkalinity is high, uh, the pool will start to uh, precipitate the white particles, right? The white particles can be high hardness and uh, it it shows it manifests itself and uh, uh, there's the only way you can remove that is by lowering the ph and the alkalinity with acid okay but if your pool continuously gets cloudy yeah please check the hardness okay and uh, if the pool is not cloudy because of that not because of the water balance then definitely your filter is not functioning properly uh, you might want to clean your filters quickly uh, and then start filtering again, okay? And also, of course, you can use clarifier, but that's a long shot. You have to pour it properly, mix it properly, and then you have to vacuum it slowly, okay? Algae pools, of course, um, green pools are very notorious. It's a number one problem with all the pool owners. Uh, we'll discuss this in, in, in the next slide. So main problems with pool owners. Uh, so not just with the pool, but with the pool owners, it's limited time, limited knowledge, and no correct dosages. So uh, those are the three things we have noticed, uh, experience with. Uh, very self-explanatory, since you guys are already pool owners, you know these uh, to be a very valid, uh, uh, very valid problems. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, so case study, uh, starting a pool, it's not really a case study. It's just how to start a pool. So when, what do you mean by starting a pool? That means you have a very brand new pool or you have drained all the pool, what to do? Um, so this is a very quick uh, explanation is check the pH. Of course, you want the pH to be right. Then check the chlorine levels of the pool. Then you add algae bombs just to make sure that pool is disinfected properly. Turn on the filter and the pump. And then you can add sp a spark, spark pool conditioner the next day just to make sure the pH don't uh, yo-yo inside the pool. Uh, you can add active summer just to protect the chlorine. And then you can add uh, algae preventer to make sure that no nutrients in the pool. Add clarifier to make the pool clary, uh, to improve the clarity of the pool. Vacuum the pool. After clarifying, after adding the clarifier, you definitely need to vacuum the pool. Uh, and then you continue to filter regularly, right? So this is our, our version. There are many versions. Uh, this is our version of how we start the pool. Um, we like to give the clients the correct dosages and we like them to not have hassle. Um, so we, we work on the preventive side. We don't work on, we don't wait for the problem to arise. We work on the preventive side, right? 
Okay, so next is maintaining the pool every day or two takes only 15, uh, takes only five to 10 minutes to do. Okay, so you use test kit or strips, uh, very easy. Within 15 seconds, you can know the condition of your water and make sure the pH is 7.2. Of course, if it's high, add muriatic or dry acid. Make sure chlorine is 3 ppm. We only use 70% Japan chlorine. There's Chinese, sorry. Uh, we don't recommend that because it will only it will also increase, increase the hardness of the pool because of the calcium, right? And then add pool, pool clarifier if the pool is slightly cloudy. Okay, so maintaining the pool weekly, of course, add uh, these two chemicals. Uh, this is weekly. Um, yeah, and it helps the chlorine and the and the pool from growing algae, right? Okay, so green pool, uh, you have to start around 5 p.m. So this is when your pool is literally green, right? You start around 5 p.m. and then you use uh, the current, the items like you throw the algae bombs or you shock chlorinate the pool. You wait overnight for the chlorine to work. And then you add the clarifier around the pool in the morning, and then you vacuum the pool, and then you correct the pH. Uh, the reason why we don't correct the pH initially is because of the algae bombs. The algae bombs work on a on a long scale of pH. It can work in highly acidic or in highly alkaline. Uh, but with shock chlorination, probably you need to lower the pH first. Okay, and then you can uh, you correct the pH. Okay, and then you add the chlorine. Uh, just add 3 ppm, but because by now the pool will already have clarified. So if the pool is still not clear, let's say after vacuuming, the pool is still not clear, again, repeat the process. Now, okay. So again, shock chlorinate the pool. Again, you wait overnight. We don't recommend you shocking the pool in the morning because of the sunlight. Remember, the sun is our major enemy for the chlorine. And then again, you add active summer and then you try to prevent algae from not growing in the first place. Please do not wait for the pool to go totally green. Uh, and then cloudy pool, uh, adjust the pH to 7.2. Maybe it's just a pH issue. If it's not the pH issue, then it's, uh, it's the filtration issue. That means your filter's not working properly. Clean your filters right away. Uh, try to see if the pool will clarify. If it still won't clarify, add the pool clarifier. Turn the pump on for two hours. This is for the mixing action, right? Since we don't have a mixer, we need to turn on the pump so it will mix properly. Then you turn off the pump and wait because now you need the sedimentation process where the, all the particles, if they are if they are really um, uh, uh, like pollutants or if they are particles, they will they will gel together become heavier and they will settle to the bottom of the pool, which you can then vacuum, okay? That's the whole scenario behind a pool clarifier. And then you vacuum the pool very slowly, like mentioned earlier. So chlorine odor, sorry for this one. Uh, chlorine odor, when there is odor in the pool, basically it lacks disinfection. So you just either shock chlorinate the pool or you can throw the algae bombs and that will take care of the chlorine odor. Now, other important things to do almost on a daily basis is you have to clean the skimmers. So if you have skimmer baskets, uh, check them every day, remove all the leaves. Don't let the leaves linger there for very long because again, they introduce nutrients and nutrients bring in algae. Uh, and then you vacuum the pool. That's why robotic cleaners are a, a lifesaver because you are required to uh, vacuum the pool almost on a daily basis. Um, and of and almost every every pool is number different, diba? Right? So, uh, is I cannot give a same same suggestion, but the but understand the understand the the science behind it is if your filters are not working properly, and when you jump into the pool and you find so many stones, naman, at the bottom of the pool, please guys start vacuuming the pool. Right? You, that means it's not just stones, but it's other things that that are also at the bottom of the pool. And they also help in circulation, right? Because they will take the water from the bottom, naman, and then they will they will move the water around in the pool. Run your filters. Um, I cannot emphasize this enough. Please run your filters, and then clean and backwash your filters regularly as well. Okay, not on daily basis, but regularly. It depends on the sizing, like I mentioned earlier. Alrighty, and then proper etiquettes in the pool. Shower before going into the pool. Guys, you will save fifty percent on chemicals <laughs> if you if you just make sure that everyone takes a proper shower 
Uh, you clean your stuff before you throw it into the pool. Don't pee in the pool. Don't swim with a bad stomach. Don't swim in a pool with a lot of babies. Uh, I have a baby and, you know, uh, even with a pool diaper, like a, a child diaper for pools, uh, it doesn't stop. And then kiddie pool needs more maintenance. This is for the people with kiddie pools. Uh, so kiddie pools actually need more maintenance than an adult pool because adults can actually hold stuff in. Kids cannot. Um, yeah, please pay attention to this one. And you force other people to do this as well, okay? Okay, so uh, yeah, that those last nine minutes were probably like a F1 car race, no? Trying to just trying to finish through all of this. So guys, uh, I'm up for question and answers. Um, this is recorded, so it will be posted on YouTube and it will be posted on our Facebook. And you can rerun this, okay? So, alrighty. So I'll stop sharing. And there's my face. Um, so guys, yeah, I am up for your questions now. I'll open the chat box or just regular now. Go ahead, guys. Who would like to ask first question? We have how many participants here? We have five participants. We have four participants. Four is enough. It's okay. No problem. Uh, yes, guys. Anyone with the first question? Hello. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone with questions? Hello, guys. Uh, I think you have to unmute your your microphones. Uh, yeah, it's okay. You can you can talk to my mom. Yeah, hi, hi, Bechai. Yes, hi, mom. Good morning. Hello, sir. Sir, yes. possible to filter yung problema ko? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I saw your pool, right? So your pool is has been cloudy for multiple days, even after shock chlorinating the pool. So it could no. be... Yes. Filter, yes, sir. Yeah, it could. Uh, how to know it's hundred percent filter talaga yung problema? Uh, I would recommend that you backwash, uh, your filter, and uh, if the water is still clear, let's say during backwash, the water is clear right after parang mga mga twenty seconds or thirty seconds, the water is already clear. So there's parang I think there's not enough enough pressure. To remove all the, to remove all the the dirt in the filter, so possible na, uh, possible na you can I know, uh, you can. You have to either replace the pump or you have to, uh, you have to backwash longer. But we don't recommend backwashing longer because it's the same thing. Uh, you need more pressure. You need more power there. Uh, how to add more power while backwashing? Either change the sand because it's a bit heavier, heavy shop. Uh, you can use uh, a lighter filter media, like say like AFM or any glass filter media, major light shop. It don't need a lot of, uh, or you can replace it with anthracite. It's another filter media, major light shop. Uh, it's very, it's almost half the weight of sand and easier to easier to backwash right so that means you don't have to buy a new pump you don't have to buy a new filter just change the filter media lang. so yun bago lang kasi sir bagong papalit lang wala pa yata one month yung sand di ba sinabi mo opo oh, yeah so cartridge ang inanay sa kanya eh, pinalit cartridge opo oh, tapos sand na siya Okay, so from sand you change to uh sorry from cartridge from cartridge you change to sand. Oh. 
How about pag pag may pag may cartridge that day? How was the how was the how was the performance of the cartridge? Okay, filter? naman sir. Okay, naman din. Na Nung eto ilang days na nagaano na siya, parang nagdidikit na siya. Yeah. Tapos ngayon, mm-hmm. mas nahirapan siyang mag-filter. Correct. I think, ma'am, yung sand naman, there are multiple qualities of sand. So, my, my, there, like, usually the client would say silica sand. So, now, maraming klaseng ng silica sand. There is different sizes. Yung mga bato naman, di ba? The, the sand, it has different sizes. It has different, uh, uh, it's different shape. Some, uh, this is in the water treatment industry. We use the is, sand filter is also used by big companies like Manila Water. Kaya lang, we have specifications on the sand. We cannot just use any sand. So we have specifications. So for pools naman, we recommend a spe, we recommend pool sand. We don't recommend just any sand. So maybe uh, that there are multiple maybes here, no? Because uh, we were not the ones uh, or uh, you saw it. Well, what sand they put, what is the packaging of the sand, uh, and then hanggang saan yung sand uh, na nakalagay nila, so that when you're backwashing, so let's say, uh, while you're backwashing, so the sand will go up, diba? it needs a bit of space ah. para ma-release na niya yung particles, kasi you're reversing the flow of the water. Now, kung, kung your sand is filled the more than 60% in the filter or 70%. And it looks like a tomato, diba? So, uh, so marami yung, maganda yung backwashing in the middle, but walang backwashing on the side. And then also because, you know, some pool builders, uh, I don't want to blame them. Uh, they Since they don't know, they will fill it up and then they leave no space for backwashing. Then wala na. Uh, even no, kahit how much you backwash, the water will not backwash. Mom, you can easily tell by ano lang. Uh, you backwash your filter and you tell me how quickly does the water start to run clear. Or, uh, yeah, kasi with ibang, back, ibang filter media, hindi siya, it will be very dirty initially and then over time, maging clear na siya, no? Uh, parang ganun siya. But in other, in other filters, we have noticed that if we backwash, uh, madumi siya. And then, after 10 seconds, clear na yung tubig. Then, we shut off the pump, we backwash again. Right away. Like, let's say, after a minute, we, we start the pump again. Again, madumi siya. But after 10 seconds, okay na. Okay na. Again. So, that means, though the the pressure is not enough, right? So, those are the two things. Um, so, I hope you can, you can try that. And if not, then, if ever... Uh, we are we are, we are planning a, a schedule for South Luzon. Uh, we'll we'll visit all our clients, uh, and see who we can help uh, personally, uh, and check quickly. Parang ganon siya, okay? Don't worry, we will not leave you with us when you start when you actually buy from us. We start a relationship. Uh, I don't think any pool builder or any pool company actually has a group where they discuss with their clients how to, what's going on, uh, uh, and personally answering all your questions. So we will not leave you. Because once you already have the, the, the once you have step-by-step um, um, -step solution for your pool, then yeah, you'll probably not need us again. But I think the first, getting the first things right is always a challenge. So you're, you're on that first stage path. So eventually once this is solved, after that, you won't have any problem. And again, I'll tell you, sand is a good filter. Kaya lang, it has to be sized properly. Okay? All righty. So... Saan niya papasakay yung medium niya? Ano naman? Ano, ano, Papalitan ko yung sand niya. Um, Mom, you check... Well, hindi kasi ko, sir, na-check kung kulang yung nilagay nila eh. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You can check the backwash line. Uh, ah. You know, pag backwash siya, may... San papunta yung, where does the dirty water go? So you can check there. Uh, once you backwash, ano yung klaseng tubig na nalabas? Is my Tagalog okay? Anyway, uh, what kind of water goes out from that 
pipe. Is it is it clean? Is it dirty? Parang ganun. Okay. And an another random tip I want to give you guys uh, is uh, if if you have noticed um, uh, the your pool is very problematic. What you can do is parang get like a baso lang, di ba? Mom, mom, I told you this one before. Uh, you can get a basu of water, uh, put it outside, uh, like uh, put it on your table and do like a small scale uh, experimentation. Let's say then you don't have to waste a lot of chemicals. So let's say uh, your water is cloudy. So you take it out in a glass, you put it on your table, uh, you you put a bit of muriatic acid and you see if the pool, if the water will clear. If hindi siya ma clear, just leave it somewhere that no one will disturb and see if that particles will float down on its own. Or if not, then just add very little pool clarifier just to see, and then you mix it with a spoon, and then you see if it will really, if it will really uh, no, go down into the, into the glass. If it does that, that means you found your solution, right? You do it on a small scale, and then you try to do it on your pool. Before you go into directly into your pool and waste a lot of money, you try it on a smaller scale. So that would be my advice. Because every pool is different, guys. Uh, everyone's water, to a certain extent, uh, there will always be differences. And uh, uh, we, kami naman, uh, it's very challenging, of course, because we don't see you in person. So uh, iba iba yung mga problema uh, and iba iba yung mga situation. Uh, so that would be our number one. Uh, and remember, mom, uh, when you saw your pool was very green, actually the water was clear naman, only the flooring was green. So yun, uh, sometimes the water is already clear, but it just looks green to us. Uh, so yun, pero the algae has to, re has to be removed. And that's the only way to remove algae is by either shock chlorinating or adding uh, algae bombs, right, into the pool. Okay. I think we are sending you multiple uh, we are also I think we're sending a test kit. I'm not sure. Uh you also check for other like qualities like hardness and alkalinity. But rest long story short, let the clarifier arrive. Uh, we will add the clarifier into the pool and then we'll check. We'll check with that one first. Yeah? So step by step lang tayo. Mom, don't lose hope because it's a long thing. It's a long journey, right? It's a long process. Uh, initially, again, the word is initially. In the first, long, and then after that, easy. Easy to maintain. Okay? All righty. So next question is from Miss Jane. Sir, can Tawas be a substitute for clarifier? Yes. Actually, there has been one member in our community uh, or in our group that has been uh, telling people to use Tawas. Uh, personally, uh, I have not used Tawas, it's, but it comes from the family of alum. And alum is one of the coagulants that we use for, drink, uh, for, for water treatment. In like, This is the same chemical, alum, right? It, so there, that one was, I think, potassium. Alum, right? Something like that. That's Tawas, right? So there are other alums also. Uh, there's aluminum sulfate. There's something like that. More, more like that. So this is the same thing that is being used in Manila water. Okay? Ang problema lang is only the dosage because if you put one block of Tawas inside your, inside your let's say, pool pump skimmer, right? That's where you put it and then you run the water, it will coagulate every single time. And if you have a sand filter, naman, your filter will, uh, your filter will, uh, like it will get clogged very quickly. So you have to see, you have to balance. So once clear na yung pool mo, baka you can remove it, right? Because uh, you cannot leave it there for, for forever. Uh, that's what we do in Manila water. When our water is clear, we do not use chemicals as much as possible. But when the water is, let's say, parang rainy siya, then that means there is so much mud coming in, the water becomes parang copico style na. So that's when we add like alum or we add something uh, para coagulate yung tubig. And then again, 
uh, the we check the proper dosages. This one is okay naman kasi the water is circulating back into the pool over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, so you can try lang ma'am. I would not, because uh, it's a cheaper alternative. And if it works for you, please share your experiences with us because that also helps us uh, in, in telling other people that, oh, sorry, there's actually a cheaper alternative. Pala, diba? So something like that. So I hope I answered that question of yours. Ano pa? Who else has another question? Sorry, user's iPhone. <laughs> he, he arrived like, he or she arrived like five minutes before closing. I'm so sorry. Uh, pero this, this uh, seminar is recorded, so no problem. Who else, guys? Any other question? We're already 10 a.m. So 15 minutes for Q&A. Now's the time. Any other question, guys? So I think that's, that's uh, let's wrap it up for today. Um, we'd like to, I'd like to tell you that if there are things that were not clarified within this seminar, because this was a very basic, parang overview type of seminar. Um, so cannot really go into details on everything, but uh, we will have subsequent uh, seminars where, where we are actually going into the problems. Let's say the next seminar will be about algae, then the next seminar will be about cloudy pool, then the next seminar will be about uh, parang other problems like what are the proper dosages and what are proper this, proper that. So we'll have like a, a, a weekly kind of uh, or weekly or bi-weekly seminar um, that you guys can attend and ask questions. The whole point of seminar is parang one-on-one -on -one type conversation, no? Yeah, and more case studies. Like that's the message given to me directly is more case studies. All right, guys, uh, I'm parang you want more context, no? Why should we use chemicals? Why should we use this? When to use this chemical? When to use that chemical? So, yeah, say again, we'll do that. All right, so thank you so much all for joining and uh, hope to get more feedback from you guys, yeah? See you guys. Take care. I'll close this. Okay? See you again. Bye-bye.